Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, and you're watching Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, and it is a brand new episode of Who's That Cosplayer? And joining me right now is somebody that is a phenomenal cosplayer. I know that you have all seen him on TikTok. You've seen him on Instagram. And he did me a favor by doing the JoJo Bizarre Adventure Part 4 Diamond is Unbreakable collab with me as Okoyasu. And that is Whoa, Chris, Whoa, or like I like to say, Whoa, Chris. Whoa, what is up, Chris? How you doing today, man? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm doing great. Better now that you said that. It's so funny because uh, I made that username forever ago. And yeah. a bunch of people were like, yeah, it's kind of stupid. But now no. now it's perfect. It's so perfect. It, so it is. Every time somebody says that, I'm like, oh. it, it's just like when you make that uh, your first email. And it's just like, yeah. yep, I'm staying with that email. It, I mean, because yeah. think about it, right? Uh, Childish, Childish Gambino. Like he got his name off of a Wu Tang Clan uh, name, Jim. So imagine mm -hmm. if he was just like, uh, "I'm going to do something else," but nah, he stuck with it. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, yeah, we're going into the Great Gingerbread War. I'm going to ask you a Christmas question later on in the interview. But right <laughs> now, before we get into today's interview, everybody that's watching, make sure that you like this video, you subscribe to the channel, and you hit that bell button so that way you always notify when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And as D always says, podcast link down below in the description, like, follow, subscribe. So Chris, let's go ahead and get into today's interview. So the first question that I ask each and every guest, and I'm really loving like what everybody is doing with the cosplay stuff, because I ask each and every guest, what is your origin story? Every hero or villain has one. And you know, so far I've been getting heroes and villains. And right now you're the master villain right now. So uh, what is your origin story? Interesting. And you're asking my origin story as an individual, as Chris in front of yes, you. Yes, yeah? as Chris. Yes. Who was Chris before he became, whoa, Chris, whoa. Mm, that's a really good question. And actually, actually, I think I have a good answer for this. Um, I would say before, I would say Chris has always been a really polite, really uh, nice, really, 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 uh, you know, positively intended young man. Um, but I would say like for a while, I wasn't as outwardly expressive as I am. I've always had a lot of energy, always been running around, but I always haven't been as, as down to commit to my expressions of myself in the ways that I do. Um, but something that changed that was when I got my first job, I was 16. I worked, uh, it was like my, my first official job. I was 16. I worked at this bowling alley and I was hired for this role that was called a party host. So essentially it was my job. It's like bring the fun and also manage a bunch of kids who are holding their birthday parties at our bowling alley and so on. And uh, during one of my first parties, something that we do as party hosts often is we do the cha-cha slide with the kids that we're, <laughs> when we're like on the lanes, we bring them all up. It's like kids anywhere from like six to the oldest birthday party I did was like 16 or 17. So like who, however the age, we'd get as many people up on the lanes as we could and we'd do the cha-cha slide with them. And the first time, I was asked to do this. I was so nervous because that just wasn't like the person who hired me for this role saw potential in me that I didn't see in myself. And I was kind of just going with it. But in this moment, I was like, I started sweating a bunch. Like I didn't want to go stand on the lanes. Like it was in a moment like that, that I had realized, like, I don't know what it was that made me think of it like this in particular, but I was like, you know what, Chris, we can either go up there and be like awkward and let this issue like really get to you. And that's going to impact the kind of fun everybody here has. Or we could go up there, just, you know, th go balls to the wall, just just go crazy and let it be whatever it is. And uh, in that moment, I was like, all right, we're going with the second option. So I just went out there and I was as silly, as fun, as, as wild as I could possibly be. Um, and it felt so good being so young at the time, like so many parents came up afterwards and like, where do you get the energy from? Blah, 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 blah. It was just, it was so uh, uh, immediately positively reinforced that in that moment, I was like, you know what? Whatever it is, whatever happens, like self-expression is, is the way to go. Like you, you just gotta, you just gotta rip it every time, every time. And, yeah. and people don't stop to judge you until they realize that you're judging yourself. Um, so if you just, 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 just rip it. Most of the time, people are like more impressed than anything else. I love and that's that. Such, I would say that's how he ended up uh, here. <laughs> I, I love that. Just rip it. 
It's, 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 it's like, you know, it makes me think about Beyblade. You know, you let mm -hmm. it rip, but just yeah, let it. Yeah. And, and, you know, to piggyback off of what you were saying, I 100% agree with you because it's like, I am not the best dancer in the world, but I love to dance. So um, <laughs> I had went to my friend's wedding last year and uh, one of the other um, groomsmen, he was just like, yeah, man, just come out on the dance floor and have a good time. Like, just follow my lead. And I was just like, all right. I went out there. I had a good time. And then, uh, you know, now when I go to the cons, it's like I dance at the raves. And, you know, mm -hmm. just last weekend, I actually went out to some clubs and I was just having a good time. And so it's like you said, it's just like, you know, you just got to rip it and just have a good time. And as long as you know that you're not embarrassing yourself, like you're not even thinking that you're just having a good time, then like everybody else's opinions, whether it's good or bad, because, you know, sometimes you may have, have some bad ones those opinions don't even matter because it's like you know at that moment in time that you are having a great time so i think that that is an awesome origin story so now what led to you coming into the world of cosplay oh yes 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 actually that is all thanks to my friend olivia she features in a lot of my content um and i feature in hers um but we've been friends for a really 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 long time i've known her since 10th grade and nice. 10th grade was in like 20. 2010 oh man that's weird i know um, so yeah, we're old i know <laughs> but it's been like 12 years um i've always been a like a dress up kind of guy like i've always had like costumes um or not always but once i got older and i had money i like i bought myself a full like black ranger costume just because nice. i had like a full a frozone costume that i would I, i've always liked dressing up but uh, my friend olivia was a really really big fan of joda's bizarre adventure Mm -hmm. She's been trying to get me to watch this show for forever, for for forever, <laughs> and uh, I was like, I don't know why I said no. I don't even know if it was a no. It was more like a I just hadn't gotten to doing it yet. Um, mm -hmm. And eventually, I don't remember what it was, but I was like, you know what? Let me let me dive in, and I and I watched the first season, and I was like, yo, this nigga Dio is hating as hell. My God, I need more. <laughs> <laughs> and I just kind of like went through, I was traveling a lot for work at the time. And so I was in a lot of airports. It was really easy to get through really quickly. And then I made it to Stardust Crusader or I made it to Battle Tendency. And I was just in love with Joseph Joseph. But anyways, long story short, um, that was almost, wow, actually, that was about, I think I started watching the show in like July-ish of last year. But then mm -hmm. we got through the rest of the year and Olivia was going to LA Comic Con, which is coming up literally this upcoming weekend. Nice. And uh, for Comic-Con, she was like, hey, Chris, I'm going to go to this con. Like, have you ever been to a con before? I had not. Um, and she knew that I would really like something like a con. So she was like, oh, I'm going to cosplay. Like, you should totally do it with me. Like, you could, I don't know what you could do, but like, I'm doing Friends and JoJo's if you wanted to join me for that, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, you know what? I'm just really cool. And uh, and I'm also a pretty creative person as well. I like to make things. I like to, I'm, I'm a big artsy fartsy kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, you know what? sure why not so i like in, endeavored into like trying to make this like the best i could um i sewed his robe i sewed like all the re all the rest of the pieces that i could for him i like i sat and like got a dremel for the first time and like learned a bit about eva foam and how, how to use it and blah 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 blah. and uh i i made my first cosplay and awesome. we, we debuted it at la comic-con last year and it was super cute it wasn't as as polished as my abdol my final abdol is the first one was Looking back, it was kind of rough, bro. <laughs> but, but you leveled awesome. up, though. Exactly. You leveled up. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, I, and I think exactly. that's awesome because when you were telling, like, you know, how you made your Avdol, the first thing that popped in my head was Peter Parker and uh, Spider-Man. Like, when he was making the outfit, drawing the designs and whatnot, he's just like, I got to make this Avdol perfect. And I Man. think that that's awesome, too. And uh, something I wanted to piggyback off of and say uh, when you mentioned that you were watching JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, like you're really brave to be watching that in public places because man i was at the gym and i was watching stardust crusaders and it was the episode when um avdol and joseph joestar got yeah. stuck together yeah. and i didn't know that that was going to happen and i'm sitting here on the elliptical and i'm just like oh no i'm covering up my phone <laughs> it's like, oh god so no, yeah, you're brave for that because there's some really bizarre stuff on jojo's bizarre adventure and i think it's awesome that you had a, a good friend that kept pushing you to, you know, want to do it. And then you just like, you know what? I want to cosplay. And then now, I mean, like looking at all of the cosplays that you've done, you've done some amazing work. Like uh, the most recent one that you had did 
when you had did uh, my guy Isaac from Castlevania. And when I saw that, I was just like, yo, like we interviewed Addy McCormick, who voices Isaac in Castlevania. And I was just like, yo, Addy, you got to see this. And he gave you the seal of approval. And I think that that's really awesome. And also to everybody that's watching, if you want to check out that interview, it is up here on YouTube where you can listen to it on the podcast. But I got to ask you, man, all the cosplays you've done, give me your top three. Which ones are your favorite? Oh, man. Um... I think as I, I think the way I think about cosplays, it's like each of them is like a cool, fun art project, right? Like it's like, it, it's it's the idea of looking at something and trying to bring something to life that doesn't already exist. And that's where like the most exciting part of the process comes for me at least. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting because each cosplay has been uh, its own interesting project in a way. Like I've learned different things for each different cosplay. And so what my, what comes to my head first is like, I was like, okay, what lessons have been my favorite? Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that honestly, Abdal just has a special place in my heart just because it, it was just so, it was so, I don't know. It felt like the, all of the cosplays I do are DIY, obviously, but like his just felt so DIY. Like I just felt like I was in such a, a specific kind of creative space and I had never done something like a cosplay. So like an anime cosplay in particular. Yeah. So it was such like a like um, not scary, but because I trust myself creatively, but it was like a let's see how this fucking goes crazy you know like, I, like yeah, here we go you know <laughs> and to, to have it be executed to have executed it so well and personally be so proud of it feels really good so i think opt for sure because it helped me it helped me find the love and the space in the community um number two I, and funny enough actually just to throw it in there really quick but um uh, Abdal, my friend went to Dragon Con, or my friend Olivia went to some con somewhere, and she knew Abdal was my favorite character, and she met the voice actor for Abdal. Nice. And so Abdal actually, he has, there's a video, of, his name is Tr Chris Triglophelia or something like that. His last name is really weird to pronounce, but there's a video of him like speaking to me as Abdal, and it's so sick. So like, I want to juxtapose like that video and one of my cosplays one day, but you mentioned Addy, um, and Funny enough, my friend went to Dragon Con last year and he was there as well. And nice. she got a video of him speaking to me back then. And he was like, Demon Forge Master Chris. And I'm like, ah! So like, <laughs> I, 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 I need to do the same thing where like I juxtapose like that video and then my cosplay. And be like, ah! um, so I would say number two is probably Castlevania. Okay. Just because I, that's like one, one of my friends is also the first person who told me about that show. And I didn't take it super seriously. But then when I watched it, it was awesome. Castlevania is so freaking good. Oh yes. my goodness gracious. Isaac is the best character up there. Dude, honestly, like, and I'm a big cultural and cultural anthropology kind of guy. So I love like uh, journeys and growth and how culture impacts and changes people. So just just the, 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 the discussion of and criticism of religion throughout the beginning of that show, but then Isaac's journey through it, through and past his hatred of and like circle back to a love for like it just it was just so beautifully written um and so one i had never i've never seen anybody do an isaac cosplay and i was like you know what let's, let's fucking let, let's get out there let's leave this this man needs some clout who's that cosplayer the third pharaoh and you know what too uh I found out that originally Isaac wasn't even black. Like in the mm -hmm. video game, he yeah. was white. And, mm -hmm. and Addy was telling us that when it was shown that uh, Isaac was black, uh, like the, some fans, like they were outraged by this. But it's just like nobody played the video game that Isaac was in. I mean, people yeah. played it, but it yeah. wasn't like a, a big enough crowd that played that game. So yeah. he said that, you know, of course on Twitter, like people were yeah. talking crap about him and whatnot. But then once they actually heard him voice Isaac, they fell in love with him. They fell in love with the character and he did a phenomenal job. Like when I say that he's the best character on Castlevania, he literally is the best character. Yeah, truly, 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 truly. It's like one of my favorite scenes ever. One of my favorite uh, shows is called Fringe. It's like mm -hmm. this old sci-fi TV show. But um, Lance Reddick is one of the actors in that show. He's in a bunch of other stuff, but he's one of my favorite actors. And um, when I, he he also plays the ship captain that Isaac meets, 
like mm. out in his travels he nice. talks to you and they have like all those really interesting conversations and so that that scene was even more fulfilling for me just because i love lance reddick so much mm. and i love this character and this show so much and the fact that they both got to come together and have such interesting like developmental really important kind of discussions um that essentially guide isaac to where he ends up by the end of the series you're just so 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 good so number two is castlevania sorry to answer the rest of your cards number three <laughs> nah, that's cool that's cool hey we snowball up here i love it i love it good good, good. i'm glad i'm glad uh, number three i would have to say is probably i wanna it's kind of a tie just because i both like them i like both of them so much but um it's if i had to pick one it's probably <laughs> Probably Okuyasu. Ah, I knew it. I knew it. I was just like, it has to be Okuyasu. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. And I would say the Okuyasu because I think that was the first character that wasn't canonically black that I cosplayed, um, which was in an interesting way, like a, a challenge in itself, just because as black content creators, like, Anytime you you try to switch something up, you just know yeah. you're going to receive some intensity for no fucking reason. Yep. Um, so that was definitely stressful. Um, but at the same time, it it's something else that turned out so good that I think it's like one of the it, it's my Okiyasu video or one of them is like the highest viewed video I have on my channel. There's one that's nice. like six million views. But um, that's the one I get recognized for the most. And it was so cool because I think so many people enjoyed the expression and the interpretation of it. And um, he's just fun to play with because he's just yeah. so dumb. Like, he's just so <laughs> dumb. It's so funny. Every time I wear that cosplay, I'm just I just want to be an idiot. And it's the yeah. best. <laughs> I feel you on that. Oh, my God. It's, it's like um, because you, I'm a very positive person. But when I was cosplaying as Kira, I was with my friend and Doran Sunflower, whose interview you can check out. It is up here on YouTube. Um, and I was just being a dick to everybody. And they was just like, why are you being so mean to people? And I was like, because I'm Yoshikaga Kira. It's like, I'm always like the good guy when I cosplay, like I'm Deku or I'm Jotaro. And like, Jotaro's a dick, but he's a good dick. But Kira, <laughs> like I was just being mean to people. I was just like, I'm in character. And like, that's what I love about cosplay. Just like how you were saying about Okiyasi, you want to be an idiot and it's like, that's what I love about cosplay. So, you know, I want to circle back to something that you had said about being a black content creator. And I want to know, like, has, because recently something had happened to me when uh, I had posted my, uh, I want to say it was my part six Jotaro. It was either part six or part four Jotaro in a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure group on Facebook. And like people were calling me Intero and uh, uh, like saying racist stuff about my, my Jotaro cosplay. So, I want to know, like, has anything like that ever happened to you in the cosplay community? And when it did, or if it did, like, how did you bounce back from that and not let that hold you down? Yeah, that's actually a great question. <clears throat> and I would say that it's an interesting circumstance because I think I'm fortunate enough to have stepped into a creative space after I've done my personal, like, ego orientation to myself growth. Mm -hmm in such a way that I don't really need or care to or have any interest in proving myself to anyone um, and so on. <clears throat> so I think one, yes, those things happen all the time. And any, I mean, I, honestly, I would say there's not, there's probably not a single video or single thing I've made since being in the creative space that in which there's not a racist comment so, somewhere to be found. Yeah. Uh, in particular, the most frequently on characters that aren't canonically black, as you could imagine. Um, and I would say at first, it's like a... At first, I think it. I was surprised, not surprised, but I was like, damn, that sucks, you know? Like, it, this really, this really is coming from every angle at all times, and there's no rest from it. Like, there's, there's nothing you can do to, to dodge it. And I yeah. actually said something the other day um it, but i partially thought to myself that part of my um part of my pursuit in creating my cosplays as perfectly as i try to make them is to make it so that they're so perfect that the only criticism of them that that there can even be is racist criticism yeah 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 because yeah. at the very least like i know the criticism is going to come period i know the racism actually is going to come no matter what but and it's like that's fine but at the very least 
I want you to really be racist. Like if you're, if this is your thing, I'm not even going to give you a place or an opportunity to hide your racism. Like yeah. if, if, if all you can comment on is the fact that my skin color doesn't happen to be what you think it should be for this character in this space or in this or whatever it may be, <clears throat> I say that shit. Like put, put, put that shit on, on the internet. Don't be like, oh, um, the, the hair's not right. Nah, nah, the hair's perfect. So uh, yeah. what, 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 what are you trying to say, bud? Uh, I and love if, this. And if you're thinking, I think some people would perceive that as me like trying to like cater to a group, but it's it's not that. Like I'm I'm happy with the the things that I make, but yeah. it's like a, if you're gonna be hateful, be fully hateful, so yeah. that other people can come through and criticize your hatefulness. Like if you're if you're gonna say some sh some mean shit, I'm gonna make it so you have to say it and you have to really say it so everyone can see that you're an absolute exactly bullshit. yeah, like, and then get boom. their ass out of here. Exactly, be exactly, be exactly. Camp. Exactly. And it's not even like, fortunately, it's like what, to the second point of your question, like, how do you bounce back? Like, fortunately, again, it's like, I'm, I think, fortunate enough to be developed enough in myself to not even let things like that affect me anymore. Again, yeah. like as an older black man in America, who's also worked in a corporate world, like racism is just kind of what we, the water we swim in, in America, yeah. in a way. Yeah. Um, and in that respect, I've got my, uh, my fucking anti-racism fucking guard on got the mask so on I'm, so that way yeah. yeah exactly it's like bro i'm uh -huh. not even i'm not even seeing you bro like do, do your thing please like fortunately there's also enough love to outweigh that exactly that and i love and exactly because like that's the same thing that happened with me like so many people were supportive and whatnot and like you said it's just like if you can't comment like on anything that i've done wrong and like your only comment is because I'm black or a person of color, then it's just like your opinion doesn't matter. And too, like I always say, if you have an anime profile picture, your profile picture, your opinion doesn't matter anyway. So, you know, we're getting close to the end of the interview and I got to ask the JoJo question and then I got to ask the Christmas question. So the JoJo question first is, which part is your favorite part? Man, that's tough. I feel like whenever I cosplay, I get super excited about the part that I'm cosplaying for. Um, just because I'm like, I'm in character. I'm like, oh, I need to know, I need to know, I need to know. So I just recently rewatched all of part five and uh, part five is actually kind of good, bro. Yeah, um, it is. I, it's, it's growing on me. It didn't yeah, used like, to be, yeah. Agreed, 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 agreed. I was like, oh, part five is kind of mid, but like rewatching, I'm like, part five is kind of stupid, but I love it. <laughs> um, that said, part four is also really fun. My friend Olivia, who's the one who introduced me in the first place, um, her part, her favorite is part four, and she's always said like, "Oh, it's my comfort show," and I'm like, "Yeah, I think I get that now." Like, you it can is put any yeah. episode of part four on like at any time, and it's fine. It's it'll yeah. be a chill time. It, you're gonna laugh. It'll be an interesting episode. It'll be silly, funny. I agree. Even when Kira um, dies, this is comfort. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Agreed, agreed wholeheartedly. <laughs> but right. that's it. So if I were to pick one, 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 sorry, sorry. It's definitely part two. <laughs> part two, okay. All right, all right. Joseph Joe Star's entry, saving Smokey from the cops uh -huh. by shooting a bottle in their face after Smokey actually steals from him. Like, it was that, funny. It was I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. That was super funny. So now, I mean, you know, you're talking about Joseph Joe Star. Which mm -hmm. JoJo is your favorite? Ooh, oh, for sure, Joseph. Joseph okay. is just way too cool, bro. He's uh -huh. way too cool. <laughs> I agree. I, I love Joseph. I mean, it's a lot of ass pools, but uh, I mean, when you think about it, like Joseph Joestar is the Joestar that made a lot of people continue watching the show. Because I mean, I love Jonathan, but mm -hmm. a lot of people don't like Phantom Blood. And like mm -hmm. I, everybody I talk to about JoJo, they're like, yeah, I watched the first part and I couldn't get into it. And I tell them to keep watching. And then when they keep watching and they get the Joseph Joe star, they're just like, okay, this show is really good. Cause it's just so many ass pools. And it's just like, all right, we'll let you survive, but uh, we'll kill you in three days. It's just like, what? Villain gives their opponent some time to survive. I mean, that's probably so. That means that Cell is a dragon. I mean, Cell is a JoJo reference because he gave the Z Fighters time to prepare for the fight. See, I never even thought about that. See, it's a JoJo reference. It's a JoJo. Everything is a JoJo's reference. Everything's a JoJo. <laughs> okay, so final JoJo question is: Which villain is your favorite villain? Honestly, I'm an anime only, and okay. uh, that makes a lot of people really sad. But um. I do 
I, I, I can't wait to see what Poochie does next. A lot of it has been pretty spoiled for me. So I think I kind of know, but Same. I don't know how it gets there. So I'm excited to see like all the intricacies of the rest of his story as they animate it in two days. It's coming out in two days. Know, it's coming day. out soon. Woo! It's coming out soon. I can't wait to see it, man. Like uh, part six is it's going to be a good one. I can't wait to oh. review it either. It's going to be so sure. good to see how it ends, man. So now... Final question for you before we wrap this thing up. The Great yes. Gingerbread War is coming up, and I got to know, what has been one of your favorite Christmas moments from over the years? Oh, man, one of my favorite Christmas moments from over the years. That's a great question. Hmm. Thank you. Um, hmm. It's hard. I feel like Christmas is kind of blend together at a point. But I would say a particularly fun Christmas my sisters was it bikes what did they get there was one year that my, my mom was big on like pajamas mm -hmm. um or she was for a while and so she like got us all pajamas that would all match and so on and so forth mind you i'm also five years older than my sisters <laughs> so like we're all wearing magic pajamas it was a cute time but like they either got like bikes for christmas or like scooters or something that allowed them to like ride and uh, for like a period of time, we just went out in our neighborhood and like rode their little scooters. And I just like recorded them. It was just such a cute, like Christmassy day moment kind of vibe in the most precious way. And I still look at those pictures sometimes on my phone just because they're so cute. And my sister just with their little PJs on their Santa hats just out like scooting around. It's just so precious. So that's, that's probably awesome. something that like stands out in a, a really beautiful way. <laughs> All right. I love that. And that was a good way to wrap up this interview. So Chris, thank you so much for joining me up here. It was an awesome cool. interview. I had a fun time. Before I let you go, let everybody in social media land know where they can find you. Yes, yes, yes. Fortunately, I was lucky enough that Woe Chris Woe is not taken anywhere. So uh, if you, it's Woe Chris Woe, W-H-O-A, Chris, and then Woe again. But that's where you can find everything I'm doing. TikTok, Instagram, uh, YouTube. Uh, I mean, I have a Snapchat. I don't use it, but it's there. Like what, whatever you're looking for, it's under Woe Chris Woe. Except Twitch. Twitch is W-O-A-H. I know, okay. it's stupid. It's stupid. But Woe Chris Woe. <laughs> Yeah. Right, awesome. Hey, y'all go and follow him on all of his social media accounts. And y'all know where y'all can find me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, at King Benji underscore Banks on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find me on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. I should be the first person to pop up. If not, then I need to contact Mr. Zuckerberg. Thank you all, everybody, for watching this interview. Make sure you check out some more interviews, reviews, and reaction videos we have here on the channel. Check out our podcast. We have brand new episodes every Tuesday. The link is down below in the description. And then the video of that interview is up here on YouTube on Friday. So with that being said, keep that pinky up. Stay positive. The great gingerbread war is approaching. We'll see you next time on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Peace. Thanks again, everybody, for watching another episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel podcast. We got that, too. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for further episodes and notifications. Thanks a lot to our patrons. And if you don't mind, join the Patreon. We'll be having new specials coming up soon.